Hello everyone, welcome back to Smith's Garage. In this episode, I'm gonna be going over how I keep this car cool and also touching on some other things like my transmission and uh, transmission mounts. Um, sorry, cause I sound a little bit nasally today. I've been coming down with a cold, but I still really wanna make a video cause I got nothing else better to do. But um, the reason why I'm getting into this is cause my last video was about what engine I have. And most people, when they run a bigger engine in their Volkswagen, since they're air-cooled engines, they usually have a visual tell that their engine is modified. Like their deck lid, sometimes they have hinges that leave a big gap in the top so that the air can scoop in better. Sometimes they run no deck lid. Um, just a bunch of other things that people tend to do. But what I wanted to do was I wanted a normal flush deck lid with no visual tells of the bigger engine. Like I even have the original style dual tip exhaust. Uh, the only thing that you can really see is that the exhaust is a bit of a bigger diameter. Um, and the reason why I'm able to do all of this is because I have a remote oil cooling system underneath the car and it's a pretty neat little design. Uh, so I'm gonna jack the car up and I'll give you a closer look. All right, now that my car is all jacked up into the air, I'm gonna show you what I did that makes my car special. Um, so keep in mind, these are all AN fittings. AN fittings are, I think I'm right when I say AN fittings. They're nice braided lines. So, now where do they start? So I have them, that's the oil pump there and I have them coming off the oil pump, going over my exhaust, and they come down. So that's the bumper mount, right? I'm not pointing at all, right? So bumper mount's right there. And the bottom line is where I've used to fasten uh, my brackets to, and they come off and they go up to this oil filter. My oil filter is in the back of my fender well, which I know some people uh, probably you're gonna say, oh, you're gonna puncture it with something when you're driving or whatever, but um, I don't baby the car, but I also don't like harass the car. I do a lot of drag racing, street racing, and whatever, but I don't think I'll ever puncture it. And honestly, if I do, I'll let you know, and then you know not to do that. But I've driven it for a while now, and it hasn't even really gotten that dirty. So, yeah. But. As you can see, the oil lines keep going. They go down, all the way down to there. Down to this oil cooler. Can I zoom out a little bit more? Here you go, now I'm zoomed out a little more. So this is my oil remote oil cooler underneath of the car. Um, as you can see, this is what it should look like, this open space. But I designed a bracket to hold this oil cooler in place. It is flush, if I can get that, flush with the underside of my car. That, uh, my floor pan actually sticks down a little bit further. Um, and you know, it actually works pretty well. Um, sorry for the sniffles, I'm really not feeling great. <laughs> um, and again, I haven't really found anything get stuck up in there or anything, and it's done a really good job. I have never, like, I've gotten a tiny bit close to overheating, but that was when I was driving when it was like 40 degrees out here, which was very hot for Canada. Uh, but it works really well. The only thing that I ran into, which I can still see is a problem right now. Um, so as you can see this shock, I put a couple spacers in and a longer bolt because that was where I was having a clearance issue is this shock was where that oil cooler is supposed to be. And I never had any clearance issues until now because I haven't jacked my car up like this for a while. And what happened was, is once this axle came down far, it's pushed on my AN fitting over here because I remember this hose was supposed to come straight across and then up. So it actually bent, it's bent the nozzle down. I can feel a bit of oil on it. I think it might be leaking and it's twisted it down, which is, not very good. I'm surprised it's not leaking more. Um, I might have to actually put a jack under my wheel and push it back up. But yeah, so and here's what the back side of my wheels look like with the brakes on both sides. 
Uh, but while I'm under here, I'm going to touch on my transmission, as you can see right here. Um, so that is a Rancho Transmissions four-speed transmission. It's on heavy-duty uh, swing axles, and the gear ratios are a little bit different. I can't remember off the top of my head, so I'm gonna put them up on the screen, but my first gear um, is meant for launching, and my fourth gear is meant a little more for highway speeds because original Volkswagens weren't the best at doing that. Um, and that's pretty much everything about it. Otherwise, it's mostly based off of the original transmission still. And it's pretty sweet. Um, and where I am running into issues is... Uh, give me one second. I'm going to grab my stand. I currently have my camera precariously balancing, so hopefully that doesn't fall over. Um, so... For those of you who don't know a Volkswagen transmission, uh, your transmission is mounted at the nose and by the engine, but then your engine is actually just kind of suspended. It's like the opposite of a normal vehicle. Um, and I have a 1960 Volkswagen Be Beetle, which a lot of people don't know. 1960 is a unique one-off year where this nose cone was only made in parts of the 60s. So. Um, it was a good thing I had it because they don't make it any other way. But what I've heard is that a lot of people who put these big engines in, they end up absolutely destroying those original mounts because of the amount of power that they make. Um, so my one dumb moment I've had with this car is I still have that original mount there and I still have my original mount in the front. I just have new bushings in the front one, but this one's the original rubber and everything. Uh, so. I'm going to buy uh, a Jeanberg mid transmission mount. I think they're also called a traction bar. I'm not sure. And uh, it's going to go, it's going to bolt on to these four bolts here, which are kind of in the middle and it goes across and then it bolts onto the middle of the engine horns just to give this more like support. But I'm also trying to figure out um, a way of bracing the engine a little better. But the reason why I'm avoiding that is because most of the options evolve, like revolve around bracing the engine to the body, which I really don't want to do because I'm, I already have really loud engine noises in the cab of the car or the inside of the car. And I know that if I brace this engine to the body, it's just going to make that like a million times worse. This engine like really twists and pulls when I honk on it to the point where I actually um, am worried I'm gonna break something so I'm trying to find a good way of keeping the engine where it is so if you have any good suggestions or know anything let me know I'm currently working on getting my mid mount here I don't I there's no way of me replacing this one for now so hopefully the mid mount will keep up for this and yeah a couple other little things that I'm having issues with is my I have a slight oil leak coming from a couple places which is a typical Volkswagen thing one of my oil leaks is just a simple one it's my valve cover it weeps out one side of it I just got to redo the gasket that's on it and that should be fine um, another one I think is either this sump plate the edge of the sump plate is leaking or it's coming from my engine case right around here which I'm really hoping it's not um, but I think it is. Uh, and I also have an oil leak coming from up in here on my, uh, coming out from my wheel bearing. Yeah, it's coming out a little on both sides. Um, and then they drip, it drips into the middle of this rotor and, um, and then it comes down the sides and it's glazed, it's glazed my back brakes. So when I'm braking, I really only have front brakes which is, I mean, it's a DIY line lock, really, but not ideal for when I want to emergency stop. So, yeah. But anyways, uh, that's, that's what's up with what's underneath in my car. Anyways, uh, that's all I really wanted to talk about in this video. I know it was pretty short, but uh, it was mostly just things that I forgot to cover in my engine building video, which uh, you should go check out if you're curious why I'm talking about all this. Because for some reason, after I made that video, YouTube, like, 
it's my best performing video for the amount of people who've clicked on it and how long people watched it, but YouTube decided not to put it out to that many people at all, so it has like no views. Um, so yeah, go check out that video and you'll see why I'm talking about the things I'm talking about now. Um, and yeah, uh, thank you for watching. I'll, I'll be working on all those things I was pointing out over the course of the next couple days. <sighs> that is if I don't get more sick, because I kind of feel like shit right now. But thank you guys for watching and I'll catch you guys in the next episode.